David Bowie, Time Will Crawl. Love that, remastered, that was about three years ago. I think the band sort of got together after, uh, after he died and um, did an amazing job. Um, hello, uh, sorry about the uh, impromptu nature of this, but uh, I was just gonna have a night off. <laughs> and I thought, oh, what would I do? I'd sit, I'd sit on the couch and have a beer, so I might as well do that here. Uh, it's only, only a few minutes, isn't it? Um, and I've got a, a recommendation for you. So, uh, Midnight Mass, um, that was great when I recommended that. Uh, some of the cast got in touch and the creator got in touch um, and, and, and thanked me and uh, it was lovely. Um, so yeah, and I, I, I understand that a lot of you started watching it and liked it. Well, I've got a new one. Well, it's not a new one, it's an old one. Uh, you might have even heard of it, you've probably even watched it. Um, uh, called Borgen, right? Now, I'd heard about it at the time, when I started getting into Scandi stuff, like the bridge and the killing and all those things, and, you know, uh, uh, I, I resisted that because it was political. And I, I've never, I've, I've always found politics a bit boring. But then I watched Baron Noir and I just got, I just got sucked in. And I've started watching Borgen and I'm already on the second series. It's, it's brilliant because it, obviously it is, it is a political drama, but it's about so much more as well. It's about the, the relationships. You see all their home lives as well as what's happening in the world. And uh, I love it because it's about my favorite themes. Um, it is about like relationships and conflict and you know changing the world versus your own family those conflicts like it's sort of it's about integrity and uh, and compromise and why you compromise and hypocrisy and secrecy mainly it's about alliances it's like it's like warring but with lawyers and agreements but to stay in power and it's about like it's i suppose it's about you might be doing the right thing but that might lose you the election so what do you do do you do the right thing but not get in power and not be able to do it or compromise a bit or align yourself with someone you fucking hate but it might get you a bit of it so it's it it's about you know it's about pragmatism and and principle it's great start it and the good thing is it's got three series and one coming so um if you enjoy it uh yeah and it's set in copenhagen and we're going to copenhagen soon um it's playing a little thirteen thousand seater in Copenhagen, <laughs> so uh, that's on Jane's birthday. So I mean, I said, I said that's that's really a birthday present, isn't it? Free, <laughs> free, free tickets to a Ricky Gervais gig. She couldn't, she could not believe her luck. I said, I said you're coming on the plane with me, sit up with me, right, and you get in to the. I, I said, get in for half price. But then I said, listen, it's your birthday. You can get in free. <laughs> imagine, imagine if that was true. Like, what would I have to, I, I don't know what condition I'd have to be in mentally to think, <laughs> that'd be a good idea. Jane, happy birthday, <laughs> free tickets to my gig. Good. Um, oh, it'd be good to do that, wouldn't it? Uh, I still got questions. So yeah, um, Borgen, try it.
enjoy it. Midnight Mass, if you haven't tried that. Uh, when the Dust Settles, if you haven't tried that. Uh, good. Gunner straight in there. Please say happy birthday to the Bollocks Gang premium member uh, of the bestest vampire squirrel. Happy birthday, vampers. Um, he's got a question as well. Why have you never done SNL? I've been offered SNL many times. In fact, they actually said, I can just do it whenever I want. And the reason I didn't do it um, in the early days, like I've been offered it for like, I don't know, 15 years, right? But the reason I didn't do it initially was because it was the only thing you could do. It would be a week in New York, and that's the only thing you could do, because you'd be there every day and every night. And that means I couldn't do, like, you know, Letterman and, and five of the shows. So I always chose to do those. But actually now, now I don't really have to do a lot of publicity, because it's on Netflix, and they send out an email to 200 million people. Um, I think I, I should do it. I should put it in the... I should do one. It'd be good. Um, the thing is, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. I like the work. I absolutely love the work still. I love writing, directing. Um, uh, I, I love stand-up. I love coming up. I, st I st love that more as much as I have, and probably more than I ever did. But I don't like all the other shit. I don't like having to sit down and do an interview. You know? It's too, it's, it's like, it's angsty. Because if you do it like a posh pipe, they're, trying, they're always trying to get an angle and psychoanalyze you. And it's more about them. It's more about them, what, you know, they wanna, they wanna win a prize for that interview. I just want people to fucking watch the show. So an interview for me would be, here's a picture of Ricky, he's got a show up, watch it, it's brilliant. But that's not the deal. Um, so less and less I want to do those, I don't, I don't want those, I don't do fucking interviews. I'm bored with talking about me. And that's the other thing, they can't just talk about the show. I've done interviews, it's been an hour and a half, and I thought, we haven't talked about the show. They've talked about all the other shit that's going on, the fucking stupid things I say on fucking Twitter. And, do you know what I mean? Because that is clickbait. Even the posh papers now are clickbait. They do a shitty headline. It could be, it'd be a great interview and they do a shitty headline so people click on the fucking story. So I'll, I want to try and rule that out of my life. Um, that's why I come straight to you. See, I was hoping this, right? <laughs> I wouldn't ever have to do another interview. I just say to you lot, watch the show and you tell 10 of your friends and that would be it, wouldn't it? So why don't I do that? Well, that's the deal. I'll keep doing these. But you've got, to, you've got to do my publicity for me. You've got to... <laughs> you sort of do, actually. I sell gigs out on Twitter now. I don't have to do... I've heard people spend millions on advertising, but I just... I do a tweet. And I, I sold out Wembley in about three minutes. And so that is thanks to you. So it does work. Come direct to the public. Then you don't have to do anything. They don't have to worry about anyone fucking thinks you. You don't have to worry about what fucking... Studio thinks here, what the press think here. They can't do anything. They can't stop you buying tickets and watching my show. And it's a, and then everyone wants you because the public like you. So I think that's what I like doing. Cut out the middleman. Go straight to you idiots. And that's it. <laughs> we win. Um, talking of gigs, best ever. I, I, I'm loving it. I don't know if it's still the, you know, coronavirus factor, but it's just astounding. Like, to the point where I've said before, it's like moving. I've got, and I, I've got a dry mouth because I've never heard a, a cheer like it. I, I think it must be that they can't believe that they're, they're out and we're back to normal as well. I'd like to think it's because I'm brilliant, but <laughs> I think it's because they've been locked up for two years. <laughs> but uh, yeah it's going great I, I might put some more in but by the time I've you know filmed it and then they they hold it back and translate it into 150 languages I could probably do some more gigs after Christmas um, 
but we'll see. So thank you for buying the tickets. Wembley this week, can't wait. Uh, um, what would, okay, Deborah Keenan, would you rather be remembered for your comedy or your animal activism? Can't say both. I don't know. I just don't care, do I? Because I'll be dead. Uh, I don't know. It's weird because obviously I'm, I'm, I'm proud of both, but I suppose I'm proudest of my animal activism because that's something that's actually tangible, isn't it? But then I wouldn't, no one would listen to me if I hadn't done comedy they liked. Or would, I don't know. I mean, that's why I get these awards for animal activism. It's not that I do more than the other people, it's that I'm more famous than the other people. Every time I get an award for Animal Activist of the Year or something, or Humanitarian of the Year, I think, I think I know, I know 50 people who've done more than me, they're just not famous. And I try and acknowledge them. But it's good for them as well, because, that, you know, it, 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 I, I bring light to their thing, but I do, I, I do try and always let people know I, I, I'm, I'm highlighting what they're doing. Um, so when a, a charity sort of, you know, acts me in and I, I retweet them, they get, they get more hits because I retweeted them, but they've done the work. They're the ones doing the work. I just, I retweet them and give them a bit of money, but they're the ones that go to China and save bears. They're the ones that go to Afghanistan and save dogs. They're, do, you, do you see what I mean? All I'm doing is helping them do brilliant work and I, <laughs> I'm getting the credit. <laughs> but, I don't, I, but everyone knows really, everyone knows. I hope they know that um, I'm a, a, a figurehead. And they're the ones that are really, you know, it's like there are thousands of people that stand outside supermarkets every day collecting the stuff that no one knows who they are. They don't get any credit. They're doing it because they're good people. Um, uh, what charities do? Oh, um, I'll tell you a charity. I don't think I've talked about much that I, I, I help now and again and are, are struggling. Uh, wildlife Aid. Uh, it's a, a bloke. Um, his name's Simon Cow, not that Simon Cow, but his name's Simon Cow. So um, check out Wildlife Aid, uh, and uh, and it makes a difference. Those little things where you know one person does it all, it really makes a difference. You know, I I do give to the big ones, but there's so many admin costs that your your your, your pound d doesn't doesn't go to a little animal. Whereas these little ones, uh, and you know, all dogs matter. Those, that pound, it, it, they get a pound. Um, so I, I, I think, um, yeah. Uh, someone just said there, you know, in China, they're putting down people's pets. If the person's got COVID, they're trying to put down their pet. Fucking idiots. Misinformation is gonna be the death of humanity. People believing stupid fucking things rhino horns of medicine bollocks it's keratin it's just stupidity is going to wipe out the fucking world science works whatever you wait uh, i mean that's the good thing about reality it's there whether you believe it or not but if there's enough fucking idiots not doing stuff that's right <laughs> We're fucked. <laughs> oh God. Um, I'd I'd rather be remembered for my animal activism. Um, I think that I think in the future, with all the fucking madness and nonsense and stupid conspiracy theories, I think uh, it will it. It will be looked back about. I think things like bullfighting and bear baiting and enslaving 
whales and dolphins, well, we looked upon like we used to can torture people and put leeches down our bollocks. It we look like a, you know what I mean. I think in like a hundred years time, people look back and go, they used to do what? They used to they used to keep they used to make dolphins do tricks. That's mental. It, I, I, I'm hoping it will be like that was fucking mental. I mean, to the point where I hope people will go, they used to eat, what, what? They used to eat animals. <laughs> but we've got this beautiful grown pea protein that tastes better and makes you strong. Um, but I don't know. Uh, what would you do for 24 hours if you ever decide, this is from Tony, what would you do for 24 hours if you ever decided to do it for charity event like Children in Need? I know, I, I've thought about this. Right, this is my art project, right? Sponsor for 24 hours, right? I'd be in, uh, you know like David Blaine sort of put himself in a glass case? I'd do that, right? Or in Selfridge's window or something. Like somewhere, somewhere though, I'm in a case, right, and all safe, and people gather around and take selfies. And I'm sitting there with a beer, and for 24 hours, everyone who comes up, I've got to say, you stupid cunt, right? That, just, just that. I'll break the world record for the most amount of times any one person. <laughs> you stupid, you fucking, you silly, you stupid fucking cunt, right? And try and break the record. <laughs> Please take me selfies. Old, old ladies. <laughs> oh, God. Um... Uh, what else? What else is there? Uh, oh, thank you. You voted for um, Supernature and it's got shortlisted for uh, uh, the National Comedy Awards. The vote's just opened today for their shortlist. So please vote there. TheNationalComedyAwards.com um, So vote there. What else? Uh, let's see if there are any more questions. Uh, uh, I, I, I haven't seen it. I didn't give them notice today. Oh, the, oh, Mr. Taco says bring Pickle on. <laughs> because he can say he wants a night off. <laughs> Pickle's eating. Uh, uh, spontaneous bird on a mission. Spontaneous combustion. Is it a thing and what actually causes it? I don't know. Is it? I mean, is it a thing? I mean, it's possible. It's not supernatural. We've got all the, we've got all the elements in this that could. I'm cynical. I don't know what would. What you'd have to do to just burst into flames. Uh, I don't know. You have to ask someone. It could start a conspiracy theory. I uh, did a, I think one of the best episodes yesterday of um, Absolutely Mental for Series 3 with Sam Harris. And we talked about what's, uh, what's the fact now in human evolution? How are we being selected? Because it's obviously no longer, you know, just strength and speed. And it's still passing on your genetic material. But what factors in choosing mates and stuff? And... Um, uh, like even social media, uh, we go into it depth. But I, I, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I watched a great podcast. Oh, what's it called? Oh, it's two guys. They really got to get it. And it was um, a bloke called Will Store, who uh, I think was a journalist and a, a writer, talking about. Um, so this is it. I, this is it. In a nutshell. I, I I probably won't do it justice, but. Um, so, uh, we basically, humans gossip, you know, our evolution is based on it, right? Um, and, uh, so when we were little tribes, we, when we first got language, we'd gossip, right? We'd go, he's good at this, he's good at that, right? And that would raise his status, so we'd like him. And it was to control the group, like, he's not, he's not pulling his weight, don't trust him. So that's how we built our 
you know, society really. And uh, then when society got bigger and bigger, we couldn't control them. So that's how sort of organised religion grew in a way, because we could go, well, you've got, to, these are the rules for everyone, for all of us. And, um, uh, uh, you know, whatever you do, God's watching you or whatever. And it sort of, again, controlled the, all the, all the tribes. And, um, there were, there were, there were factors. It was all about status because we want status. Or we, in a group, we always want status. Even, even little kids, they fight over a toy for status. They might not want the toy, but they fight over it. And traditionally, status in a tribe was, was usually who was the strongest, like violence. Um, but again, with society, we sort of lost that as a factor. And there were two ways you could raise your status. One was be competent at something, be good at something. Right? He's brilliant at that. Right? He's the best at that. He's done well. The other one was virtue. Like, he's not very good at anything, but he is kind or he is, you know, he is honest. So that would raise your status, right? So competence and virtue. And re even religion gave that to some people that if you weren't very good at anything, you could still have virtue, right? right? Uh, but um, with the death of sort of, you know, organized religion, the next big thing for gossip was like journalism. I put red papers and trusted them and everything. And with the death of that, now it's sort of social media. But the two factors still remain in society. You're either good at something, he did this, that's, it's all about reputation to raise your status, because you don't know them, you don't know the people, you can't know billions of people, so it's reputation. So he did this, he's great at that, or they're virtuous. Now, the thing with social media is, and society, people have realised they can just lie. They don't, they don't have to be really virtuous. They can just say that. And that's what virtue signaling is. So when someone goes online, they're trying to bring someone down. They're going, oh, he did this. I wouldn't do that. Well, we don't know that. So they're pretending they're virtuous, but they're just not. So that's you know, half the people online. They're just lying. And I thought it was fascinating. It was just fascinating um, how that's a new strain that you can just, you can be a social justice warrior and a total hypocrite. You're just bringing people down to raise your, because you're not competent. You haven't done anything. And that's why you find, like, in any sort of situation, people go after people who have done more than them. Do you know what I mean? You don't see, you don't see Jerry Seinfeld slagging off new comedians. But you see new comedians or bitter comedians slagging off Jerry Seinfeld because they haven't achieved, they're not competent like he is, so they're trying to bring him down to raise their status amongst their tribe, their followers. So basically, just be nice. Don't be a cunt. <laughs> that, I've, always, I've always felt like that and I've never heard anyone put it into words like that. But I've always thought, I wonder why people are trying to bring people down. Whereas if they just concentrated on their own career, they'd do better. But they've wasted, they've wasted their career slagging off people who have, who have achieved more. But they would have achieved more. If they hadn't been slagging people off, they would have achieved more. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. And I, I talk about this with um, Sam Harris uh, in more depth. We've done about four out of the next ten uh, so that's the sort of thing we talk about. Um, we talked about time travel as well on one of them, about whether you go to the future or the past. And it's like an hour of us arguing about what would be better and all the loopholes of it. Uh, uh, Jill Boshi says, how do you keep a straight face when David Bowie was singing that little fat man fucking his face on extras? <laughs> um, well, I'd written the lyrics, so I knew they were coming, but I still laughed because it was just weird to have one of the greatest rock stars and my favourite musician of all time insulting me. I like insults. They make me laugh. Uh, and when someone sort of slams me on Twitter, it's like, I laugh. I go, 
You live in a bin, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to raise their status. Um, right, that's Valerie. A birthday bollocks for Alex. Yes, happy birthday, Alex. Uh, forgot, Adriana, forgot to say we love your shite. Thank you. Um, I think she means this. Right, that'll do, won't it? Uh, so, what are you going to do? You're going to be nice, you're going to be nice online. Say, say, tell, tell people, tell people you like them. Don't tell, why do you tell people you don't like them? Fuck them. Don't, don't, don't bother. Just, uh, say when you like someone, tell them, say, oh, I really like your stuff. It's nice. It spreads. It, it, it's, it's infectious. Um, uh. I always, I always like those things that who's your favourite thing as opposed to what do you hate? What do you hate? It doesn't matter what I hate, does it? Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> um, that's the best vote, isn't it? Don't go. As long as we laugh when people are slagging off comedians, they haven't even seen them. They haven't gone to their show. You just heard, you just heard something. Uh... So, watch Borgen, watch Midnight Mass. Um, if you can, check out Wildlife Aid and all the other charities still, All Dogs Matter, all the charities. Uh, I'm gonna uh, donate the, uh, the charity profits of um, Supernature. I'm gonna split that with a few things like uh, Nails Ad and um, uh, Animals Asia. Uh, but give to the little ones. Give to your little local charities. Check them out. Give to your local charities. Uh, seek the truth. Don't believe in bullshit because it's online. It's probably bollocks. Um, go with science and logic. And, uh, you know, have a beer. Uh, and vote for Supernature at the National Comedy Awards. See you at Wembley, if you're coming to Wembley. Retweet this. That's no skin off your nose, is it? And let's build up. Let's get so many followers like that I don't ever have to do another interview. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Tatty bye, everyone. Tatty bye.